Good morning guys or good evening or good afternoon wherever you are. I hope you guys are doing good. This is a new week. Happy new week. If you're not subscribed to my channel, this is another week of me begging you, pleading with you, encouraging you to please subscribe to my channel. Two weeks ago or was it last week? Um, if it's kitchen on YouTube and Instagram, if it's kitchen put out a post and I'll read that post to you guys, right? I'll read out the post. She put up a reel talking about like she wrote on the on the reel She was talking about responsibilities of you as a wife, you know your responsibilities in your home, okay? And the funny thing is that I don't know. I feel like I've been so conditioned by social media that when I was reading the post I was waiting for the sarcastic you know, ending, right? I was waiting. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the only one that felt that way. When I was reading, okay, things you should do as a woman in the home, I was waiting for her to start exaggerating, you know, and start saying things that are, are outrageous, that would just be, you know, something funny that you just laugh, at, laugh about and make some comments about and just move on, okay? So, I was waiting for the, the funny part. <laughs> I was waiting for the sarcastic ending there was no sarcastic ending she was being dead serious she was being for real for real and i just knew that ah food is ready food is ready for the feminist warriors food is ready for the <laughs> for the fighters right and without disappointing people actually had issues with that post so i want to read the post out to you guys and you know discuss it now personally I wouldn't say I was triggered by the post. I wasn't triggered by the post, to be honest. And I wasn't a hundred percent like in support of the post either. Okay, so it's not like I saw the post and I was like, yes, yes, exactly. Like, ah, my mind. I just say my mind. No, I wasn't that way. But when I read the post, I was like, oh, yeah, whatever. And I just moved on because you know it wasn't a funny post. So I was like, yeah, nothing funny to see here. Let me move on, right? But when she now put up the video of oh how she was dragged, I now went back to the comment section of that video and I laughed. I was like, ah, women, women, we cannot disappoint. And the truth is that one thing I want to put out there first before we get into the post is that I feel like the pendulum is swerving the other way, okay? You know how a pendulum goes, right? So we first started from being very conservative. I mean as I'm talking about Nigerians now, okay? I'm not I'm not talking about women in general in the world. I'm talking about Nigerians. We first started off our culture, our tradition, our you know, history surrounding women. We we are very, very conservative. Too conservative, right? Too women we are almost like, you know, don't be seen, don't be heard, just do your job and go away, right? In some cases, though, it's not in all cases because sometimes I feel like we used to misrepresent history or we misrepresent our culture sometimes to make it look as if women we are just properties, like you're not different from a slave, you have no say, you have no impute, you have no, you know, I no, it wasn't that bad. I'm not saying it wasn't bad enough, it was bad enough, but it wasn't. Sometimes it's not as bad as we try to misrepresent it. You know, sometimes we try to make it look as if, you know, especially Igbo women, I don't know. I feel like in Igbo culture, because women are not entitled to some certain things or we are not entitled to some certain things, we try to make it look as if, oh, the women, we are just absolute non-entities that had no input, had no had no input in society or in their homes or anything. No, it's not like that, okay? All those things are nuanced, right? But generally, we can all agree that women were generally more oppressed and that we were all very conservative as a culture, as a people. Now, in order to correct some of those wrongs and correct some of those excesses and correct some of those, you know, rubbish that went on or, and are still going on, we are swerving the other way. And I feel like we are going to the extreme the other way, right? And if you go if you go to other people who are more advanced, like in the developed countries who have gone through all those, okay, who have been there and done that, if we go to those countries and really watch them and really take a cue from their, you know, experience, we will see that swinging extremely to the other way it's not really a good thing either, okay? Like, we need to be very, very careful when we decide to swing entirely the other way around. And I'm not just talking because of cultural, you know, issues or family issues. I'm talking about as a society, okay? As a society, let us not be so liberal that, you know, in trying to fight the conservatism and, the, you know, cultural backwardness and all of that, right? Let us not become so liberal and so 
forward and so you know progressive that we will now we will not have brain again our brains will now fall out because that is what is happening in a lot of western worlds especially when it comes to the culture there are so many cultural wars going on around the world I'm not talking about like actual wars, I'm talking about, you know, war on ideology, war on conservatism, war on Christianity, okay? It is going on all over the world, even a blind man can see it, so if you cannot see it, then <laughs> you are <laughs> you are sleeping on the bike, okay? It is going on, we are about to become the minority, okay? I'm talking about conservative Christian um, um, women, okay, or conservative Christian people are about to become the minority and i feel like right now there's also a war on the family especially on mothers okay wives and mothers are being under attack and i mean when i say wives and mothers i don't mean individual people i mean like the institution <laughs> or what do i call it not institution you know the office of wife and mother is currently being under attack from everyone especially women and especially liberal progressive women okay in trying to because i'm not saying that they're all coming from a bad place so i'm not saying they're coming from a bad place at all please don't get me wrong i know that deep down in their hearts some of them feel like they are doing the right thing but what they are doing is basically trying to destroy the fabric of our society you know Basically, that's what they're trying to do, but in their minds, they're actually doing a good thing, okay? There is actually a war right now on femininity, on womanhood, okay? And the, what even makes me laugh sometimes is that these people who think that what they are doing is, you know, to help women, it is obvious that all they are doing is not helping women. Like, it's not even that case of, oh, it's a nuanced thing, you know, it's kind of, no, like, you are destroying women, and you are claiming that you are helping women. You are upholding values. You are upholding um, ideas. You are upholding a certain set of people who are basically the opposite of what it means to be women. You are basically upholding male values and upholding, you know, uh, what the masculinity. But you are masquerading it as no. I'm trying to liberate women. No, you're not trying to liberate women, my dear. But before I even go further again, okay, just trust me, I'm going to get there. But before I even go further again, let me know in the comment section: Is it wrong for us as women to encourage, to advise, to discuss our responsibilities and our and our jobs and our you know what we should be doing basically as women? Is it wrong? Because, like I said, there is a war on femininity there is a war on womanhood and if we're not careful we're going to get sucked into it and we are going to actually be affected by it because it's one thing for you to see yourself and be like i'm i'm not getting sucked into anything i know what i want and blah 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 how about your children how about your daughters how about the younger generation because they did not have the balance that we had they didn't have the conservative you know upbringing many of them did not okay or don't right now don't have the conservative upbringing that we had that you know we're now using to balance the liberalism and we're just trying to get a very good balance many of them not have it many of them have are, have been raised and are growing into this world of feminism and you know progressiveness and liberalism and you know live and let live everybody do anyhow your truth my truth our truths their truths <laughs> i identify i identify you know they are growing up in that world so how do we checkmate what they are learning and what they are imbibing if we don't come out, especially those of us who are more conservative and all of that, if we don't come out and discuss these things openly, you know, how are we going to checkmate some of those excesses of the other side, right? So for me, I feel like conversations like this are very, very important. We should not be triggered when conversations like this come up. We should actually listen and give healthy reportals and logical, logical, because, because a lot of people logic is far from them okay i've noticed that thing a lot about people especially on social media a lot of people logic is far from them a lot of people don't know how to make arguments that follow a sensible pattern right like they just come with emotions 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 i feel i feel i feel it's not about how you feel it's not about you know can you make sensible points and come to a logical conclusion that we can either argue or agree with? That's what I'm looking for, okay? I'm not looking for, eh, but why don't we teach the men? Why don't we teach the men? Of course, yes, we need to teach the men some things, right? Men need to learn, okay? Other men especially need to talk to 
men, especially male pastors, male, you know, leadership figures, male, whatever, whatever, ce celebrities and stuff like that, they need to come out and address other men. But let us not get this twisted, okay? Men and women are fundamentally and biologically and spiritually, <laughs> not spiritually, but men and women are fundamentally different, okay? Women, we are interested, we are generally interested in people, we are generally, generally interested in, you know, kumbaya, happy world, let's help each other, let's teach each other, let's do this one, let's do that one. Men generally are not interested in all of that, okay? How many men do you see sit down and be discussing their life, you know, troubles and emotions and stuff like that with other men? You hardly see it, but women, ah, once you have a best friend like this, or even, no, best friend is even for herself. Once you, women are gathered, even if all of you are strangers, once you are gathered and you start gisting, gisting, before you know what's happening, the talk has entered emotions, relationships, but, uh, my children, my husband, my boyfriend, my father, my mother, uh, growing up, this, it has already entered that. But if you put a group of strangers that are men, football, this, uh, you know, they talk about cars, all those things, all those superficial things, right? That is what they are generally interested in. So, as much as we want more men to come out and discuss these things, let us always remember that it is not really their nature in general to want to discuss these things and, you know, want to, no, it's not really their nature. So that is why we have to encourage them to do it. I'm not saying you should not encourage them to do it, but it doesn't mean that in any place where a woman is talking to fellow women, we must come there and say, but why don't you go and dress the men? Why don't you go and do this thing? One thing I always say is that, we always, I'm debating again, but I need to, I'll still get to my points. Don't worry. No, just relax, okay? Go and grab your popcorn or something or snack. Pause this video. Go and get something to eat and just sit down because I need to say what I need to say very well, okay? I always say this, right? It boggles my mind when we use men as the yardstick. But men are not this. But men are not told to do that. And here, so, does it make it right? Does it make it good? You claim that, you know, Oh, women are as good as men or women are not. Some people claim that women are superior. I don't want to talk, talk about that one. That one is a mental problem, okay? Women are not superior to men. Men are not superior to, to women. We are both equal, okay? Equal but different. That's what we are, right? But so even if you claim that we are both equal but different, why is it that we empower women? Women are this. You are, you are a superwoman. Women are that. Women are this. One. Like if women were president, you know, the world would not be like the way it is. Women will not cause wars. Which is a lie, by the way. Which is a lie, but let's just continue. Oh, if women were in power, there will be no wars, there will be no this, is the male ego, is the male this, and that. Why do we say that with one side of our mouth, and then at the same time, we now try to paint masculinity as the goal, right? We try to paint, whether you like it or not, it's masculinity that we're trying to paint as the goal, because why are we teaching women to strive for things that men naturally strive for, at the detriment of... Uh, femininity okay i'm not saying that women should not be go-getters i'm not saying that women should not have ambitions and all of that but we can do it in our own feminine way we don't have to do it the way men do it why are we advocating for uh, men get to sleep around so women should sleep around like are you okay <laughs> sleeping around is bad okay so for me we should actually criticize those things that are bad about masculinity we should not Try to say, because men can get away with it, then women should also get away with it. No, 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 no. Nobody should be getting away with rubbish. Nobody should be allowed to sleep around and be doing nonsense. Nobody should be allowed to be a deadbeat parent. Nobody should be allowed to bring kids into this world that they cannot take care of and they don't want to take care of, right? Nobody should be allowed to make decisions about their children anyhow, just because, eh, it's a woman's body. When, when men, men, men can do this and, and get away with it, why shouldn't the woman? No, 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 no. We should look at what is right. What makes sense? What is good for the society? Not what do men get away with that women should start doing. It doesn't make sense to me, okay? Anyway, so for me personally, I feel like women should not be triggered when these conversations come up. It's difficult though. I'm not going to lie. It's difficult because like I said, when I saw the post, I was waiting for the funny parts and the funny part never came, <laughs> okay? So it's difficult. But we should be mindful of the next generation and we should be mindful of, you know, our social media space. So we should actually have this conversation because, trust me, a lot of women are actually being led astray and they don't know it yet until it is too late. So we shouldn't be triggered by such conversations. Even if the person is saying things you don't agree with, allow the conversation. Don't attack the person. Don't try to shut the person down or try to cancel the person. Listen to what the person has to say 
and give your own input and back and forth, back and forth. That is how we come to a very solid idea and ideology that will help the society move forward. It's not by cancelling the other person or I don't like what the person is saying, so the person is bad. Haba. So as she said, keep the home clean and tidy always. I have no problem with this part, right? But you don't have to do it yourself. That's my own. Like, you don't have to do it yourself. You can actually employ somebody to do it for you if you can especially when you are a working woman okay even if you're not a working woman to be honest because taking care of children and taking care of the home alone is so much work right so if you can afford it always get help so the next one is manage the finances diligently this one i totally 100 percent agree with this and this is why i always say you guys know now, I, I sound like a broken record at this point, but I'm going to keep sounding like a broken record until a lot more people get this into their skull, okay? A woman is not a liability just because she is not earning money, okay? Or she's not working or whatever. That is a very, very, very demonic, in my own opinion, no, that's a very demonic mindset to term a woman a liability especially a woman who is also a mother. It is a very demonic idea to term her a liability just because she is not actually going out to make money then tomorrow you'll be complaining that oh men are no longer providers men are no longer this one but how would they be when you've already put it in their head that a woman must earn money for her to be considered an asset no 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 no, no. see uh, that thing is actually very bad i don't like it right so a woman should never be termed a liability just because she is not making money okay however a woman can be a liability if she cannot manage her finances properly. That is when a woman becomes a, man, a, a liability. When she is causing you to lose money, when she is not managing the finances well, when she is doing things that is costing you money, okay, or costing the home money, or increasing losses in the home, okay, that is when a woman should be considered a liability. Okay, so what are those things that, you know, can make a woman become a liability? When you cannot even preserve like food simple food you can't preserve simple food you can't budget you can't you know bargain you can't get good deals you can't manage the finances you cannot say you cannot say oh okay oh what we can afford this month is one thousand dollars i will take care of that one thousand dollars and to be enough for the home and i will you know take care of the home in the month no they'll give you that they'll give you that one thousand dollars in two days it's finished and you're looking for more money and you know things are not yet done right you are spending money lavishly you are spending money you don't have that is a liability even women who are working there are women who are working but they cannot manage their finances they cannot manage any fine in fact they're just throwing money away you both cannot come together and make financial decisions that will move the home forward anytime both of you make financial decisions it ends in loss it ends in waste that's a liability even though she's working and any money it's not that because a woman is not working like, there are so many women that are not working but any money that they get like this they manage it well they manage their money well in fact they even help increase the money okay they help they give their husband solid advice that helps increase his his finances they encourage him in his job they encourage they help him to to do his job better in a way that you make more money they help their husbands in their husband's businesses and give their husbands ideas that makes their husbands make so much money i remember somebody that was telling me about a woman who encouraged her husband to buy some lands at some point like a long time ago encouraged him to buy some lands and he was dragging feet she kept encouraging him she kept encouraging him to buy those lands and in, in a very short period after he bought those lands in a very very short period that place opened up and the guy made millions of naira if not up to billions but like multiple when I mean, I mean like hundreds of millions of naira that is what the man made because he listened to his wife so in that case now will you say oh but she's not making money even though she made her husband make this amount of money right but she's not working so she's a liability make it make sense okay and that is why a lot of men these days are not even taking care of their wives even the ones that are working because you just feel like eh, hey, you're working now so what is your money for no 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 even if your wife is working, you should also still take care of her. You should also still provide for her. You should also still make sure that her needs are met. Right? Even if you are both putting your finances together, even if oh, my finances are, our finances are both together, we have joint accounts, we are declaring everything, it is still a, a, it's still symbolic. Okay, that's how I see it. It's symbolic for you to still give your wife, you know, gifts. Give her monetary gifts. Give her 
money for herself and say, oh, yes, I know we're both earning, you know, we're earning the same salary, we're putting our salaries together, but for my own salary, I'm bringing out this $100 and I'm giving it to you just to show you that I'm taking care of you, okay? Now, the next point is keep the kids neat and well fed. Do you need anybody to tell you this one? Before uncle? Before uncle? Do you need anybody to tell you? And again, like I said, you don't have to do it yourself, even though, like me now, I don't get choice, I do it myself, right? But you don't have to do it yourself. If you need help, employ help. If you can, especially if you're living in a country where help is, is affordable. If you need help, employ help. Be warm and accommodating to your in-laws. Where's the problem in this? Like, so far, I've not seen anything that she has said that is triggering her. Where's the problem in this? Before uncle, you have to be accommodating. You have to be warm to them. These are your husband's people. These are your husband's relatives. These are your husband's brothers and sisters. Of course, you have to be warm to them now. Of course, you have to be accommodating to them. Like, what is the problem there? I don't see any problem so far. Number five, she says, show your husband affection. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what to say because yes, of course. Like, who else will show affection? Is it another person's husband? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't understand the confusion here. Ensure the house is always stocked up with food and provisions. No brainer. Next, the next one is pray for and with your husband. Okay. Before I come, yes, of course. If you don't pray for your husband, who will? If you, as a wife, you're not praying for your husband or you're not praying with your husband, who is supposed to pray for him? Pray for your husbands. Pray with your husbands. Encourage your husbands to go to church. Encourage them to read the Bible. Okay? Remind them of their priestly duties. Remind them that they are the priests of the home. And they are the protectors of the home. Both, both physically and spiritually. You need to remind your husbands in case they've forgotten. Okay, if you're lucky and you have husbands who know their jobs and know, know their duties both, spiritual, both spiritually and physically, then you're lucky. Yes, we thank God for that, okay? But it doesn't still mean that you will now neglect praying for him just because he, he got this. Because truth be told, when you have such a husband, it is easy for you to neglect them. Okay, like it's easy for you to just feel like, ah, my husband is prayerful, my husband reads the Bible, he goes to church, he's diligent, he's this, he's that, he's that. It's easy for you as a woman to not really fight for him spiritually, right? Because, you know, you, you know he got this. But it's good that she's reminding us that, you know, you need to pray for your husband and pray with your husband to strengthen them, okay? To help them help themselves spiritually and help to help them help the family spiritually. Say thank you to your husband. Reject the spirit of entitlement. No arguments there. Makes total sense. Yeah. Matters concerning affairs of domestic staff is yours. Of course. Of course. Like, of course. Although, gate men still count as domestic staff, but in my own house, when we were living in Nigeria, my husband was in charge of the gate man. Like, I tell him, I, 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 I don't have strength. <laughs> I didn't even need to tell him though. He was already he was already the one in charge of them, paying salary, doing everything, negotiating whatever, telling them what to do, reprimanding them if they do something wrong, you know, showing them what you know stuff like that. Like my husband was always in charge, right? But when it comes to you know the other domestic staff in the house, especially the females in the house, it was my responsibility. Like nothing concerned my husband with all those ones. My husband is just. When it's time to pay them money or salary or give them money, just give me the money, finish. But now that's basically the end. Have I left anything out? Does anything sound triggering for you guys here? I don't know. Nothing sounds triggering for me. Again, like I said, I was waiting for the exaggerated part, but everything here makes sense. Everything here is just regular, okay. And I moved on. I would like to point out that the fact that she says, as a wife and as a mother, these are your responsibilities, for me, oh, it does not mean that your husband does not have any of these things as his, as his responsibilities as well, okay? It, it just means that there is a primary person who has responsibility and there is a secondary person who has responsibility. For me, all these things listed here, yes, they are my responsibility, but it doesn't mean that my husband doesn't do them as well or he doesn't have any responsibility in those things as well, okay? That's how I see it too. So for me, they are not mutually exclusive. So saying that, Oh, I need to make sure that my kids are well-fed and, you know, 
uh, uh, well taken care of and are clean or whatever, it doesn't mean that my husband cannot clean my kids or cannot feed my kids, okay? It doesn't mean that because it's my responsibility to stock up the house with food and provisions, then my husband cannot stock up the house. Like, it doesn't mean that, okay? Somehow, in everybody's home, we just know who is in charge of what, okay? It doesn't mean that the other person does not have any responsibility when it comes to all of these things. We just know who the primary person is, right? So when it comes to things like laundry, in my own homo, the primary person that does laundry is my husband. In fact, <laughs> laundry, you see laundry, you see ironing, that is my husband's primary responsibility. I help out. But it doesn't mean that I don't make sure that my kids are clean. So for instance, I go to their room and make sure, oh, all these dirty clothes that are here need to be in the laundry baskets because the laundry man needs to do his job so I make sure that their clothes are clean I make sure they have the right clothes I make sure if their clothes have some certain things and stuff I trash it I make sure they have nice clean good clothes if I see clothes that have holes and I can stitch it up I stitch it up right so yes I am making sure my kids are clean and tidy but my husband is as much is doing the same thing as much as I'm doing it, okay? Does that make sense? It's just that it's in different ways. Like, my husband is not the one that will go through my kids' clothes and be checking for holes and be checking for which one. Sometimes he does it do, do but generally he doesn't really check for, oh, who has, a, has grown what, who should wear what, you know, which one is no longer nice. He doesn't really do that, but he makes sure the clothes are clean. If you see when my husband is ironing the kids' clothes here, eh, like, he irons them as if he's ironing eh, office, office clothes. <laughs> You know, so do you get what I mean? I'm trying to just let you guys know that there are sides of this, right? Where two people can be doing the same job. Okay, that's what I mean basically. When it comes to oh, the kids should be well fed or you know, there should be food in the house. I'm the one who takes care of the kitchen, like it's primarily my job. 90% of the time is my job. I'm the one who cooks, I'm the one who stocks up the house, I'm the one who stocks up the freezer, I'm the one who makes sure that you know the meals are are, are, are cooked and the one who cleans the kitchen who washes place and stuff like that but my husband provides the money my husband drives me to the store my husband buys some things himself he picks up some things from from work like on his way back from work i need salt i need my gear i need oil i need this he'll pick them up for me uh, when he comes to the house let's say now there's no fruits he goes out and buys buys fruits uh what else what else he does the dishes when i'm not free or when i'm overwhelmed he does the dishes you know he cleans the kitchen when he's cleaning the house he cleans the kitchen um you know so we are both doing I'm the primary person in charge of kitchen, but it doesn't mean that he's not doing anything when it comes to kitchen entirely, okay? So, at the end of the day, when it comes to chores, I feel like it's not black and white, okay? Or it should not be black and white in most homes. Now, if you're in a home where your husband cannot even, he cannot even pass kitchen, so... <laughs> You cannot even pass kitchen then. My sister, you have a problem. Like, there's a problem there. You need to, you know, address it or carry your cross in one way or the other, but it doesn't mean that you should not start feeling like you are suffering just because it's your primary responsibility. Another thing I like to tell women is this, right? If you have a husband who is not so hands-on, who is not so domesticated or, or whatever, right? Just make sure that the one he can do, he's doing it to the max. Because that's the part I don't understand with women. How can you have a husband that cannot cook, he cannot clean, he cannot do this one, he cannot do that one, right? Then you're now sharing the financial responsibility with him. <laughs> Is he providing the way he's supposed Because you, you don't know how to cook, but you know how to provide. I'll be, okay, fine, then provide to the max. So don't let, let, eh? I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I don't want to hear that you cannot provide because one thing, one thing. Because when, when I cannot cook, you, you don't step in. Now, the funny thing is that in her comment section, people are complaining that why should a woman take all these responsibilities? And I'm like, are these the only responsibilities in, her, in a home? Are these the only responsibilities? Should we list out all the responsibilities of a home and check how many the men are doing? Okay? Because sometimes I feel like because it sounds plenty in our ears, we just feel like our husbands are doing nothing. The husband is not doing anything. He's just sitting there in the parlor, watching TV, crossing his leg and being served food, right? We feel like he's not doing anything. But if you cool down and really check, that's why she even said spirit of entitlement and this and that. She's very right though. If you cool down and take a pen and paper, and I, I think I even suggest that we all do that, right? Take a pen and paper and write down all the responsibilities of your husband in the home. All the things that falls on his head. You will see that, eh, okay. Maybe it's not as 
one-sided as I thought, okay? So we should better be mindful when we're saying all this. I'm not even saying, like, to me, a lot of them are even interwoven. So making sure your family has nice um, meals and stuff like that always prepared, making sure your house is stocked up, making sure your kids are well fed, all those things are actually like the same under the same umbrella, right? Being in charge of your domestic staff and you know cleaning of the house and make sure your house is tidy and stuff like that. All those things are actually interwoven. So it's not as big as I'm not saying that they're not big. Oh, please, it's a lot of work oh, on its own, right? But sometimes I feel like we over exaggerate how much these things are compared. So what our husbands do, okay? If it is night, now let's say it's 9 p.m. now and the delivery man comes to the door, best believe I'm not going to open that door. I'm not coming down, I'm not climbing down from this my throne, <laughs> from my bed. I'm not coming down to go and open the door, right? If, um, let's say now, somebody comes and knocks, I don't know who the person is and it's a man. If my husband is home, he's going to be the one that will have to go and open the door. If anything is going wrong with the house, like structurally and stuff like that, I'm not the one that's going to come and start trying to figure out how to fix the curtain rods or how to fix the plumbing work. I'm not the one about to do that though. He's going to do it except he is not in the picture. So you guys get the point, right? Like when it comes to mowing the lawn and taking care of the grass and things, I'm not about to do those things. Like I can do it because oh I want to you know help him out or maybe I find it fun to plant and stuff. But it's not my responsibility. Like I'm not going to look twice at it. It's not me that's going to go and carry lawn more and be mowing the lawn. Okay, so there are so many things that fall primarily on men that we don't take note of because again like i said the pendulum is swinging so far the other way that we just want to make it look as if men are just lying down lounging doing nothing and it's the women that are suffering from morning till night no no we can come to a balance at the end of the day what i will use conclude this video is that know what works for your home make sure everybody is contributing a hundred a hundred okay a hundred percent of what they can while you are contributing a hundred percent of what you can okay and also, if there is true love in your home, it will not be a problem, even if you are doing more. If what is number one on the mind of you and your husband is how to make each other happy, these things will not sound weird to you, okay? These things will not sound too much to you. The problem is that many of you are resentful, many of you are angry. <laughs> And we know why sometimes. Many of you are angry in your homes. That's why when they say, uh, make sure your kids are well fed, it's you, it's you prepare your body like... I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. Okay. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Anybody that wants to come for me, kindly come for me. I, I really don't mind. I don't care. I think we have been lied to and be told that, you know, we are all oppressed. You know? Like anything a woman does is oppression. Like anything that a woman does and even if she finds fulfillment in it, it's oppression. Uh -uh. It's not like that. Okay. Some of us genuinely love taking care of our kids and taking care of our home. Some of us genuinely love it. We want it. It's not even a matter of oh whether we have jobs or not. Some of us have jobs. Some of us have work that we do. Some of, in fact, some women that are killing it as their at their offices. But what gives them fulfillment in this life is their husband and children. So let's stop making it look as if things that were considered traditionally uh, feminine are bad. Meanwhile, things that are traditionally masculine are good. No, let's not look at it that way. Okay, like no. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.